Hi. Today, I figured I want to make an engine. No, not that kind, yet. I got inspired by the likes of Kersey, 3D Printed Life and Tom Stanton to try my hand at making an engine that uses pressurized air as its energy source. Lots of different designs already exist and have been tested, but I figured I'd like to try something different and new. So I set out to design the engine in my not-so-cad program of choice, Blender. Why Blender? Because I can, and I never stop to question whether I should. In the end, I came up with this design of an opposed piston engine. Here's a simple rundown of how it works. Pressurized air is usually held back by this ball valve. However, once the inlet valve cam rotates enough, it pushes on this bell crank-like thing, which in turn pushes on the inlet valve rod, pushing the ball and breaking the airtight seal, letting the pressurized air enter the cylinder. The pressurized air pushes on the pistons in opposite directions, both of which are transferring their power through these gears into the output shaft. Once the pistons are approaching their bottom dead centers, the inlet valve gets closed by the spring when the cam moves out of the way, remaking the airtight seal. At around the same time, the outlet valve, which operates in exactly the same manner as the inlet valve, will open, letting the excess pressurized air out. The outlet valve will remain open until the pistons are close to their top dead centers in order to prevent the pistons from compressing air and thus reducing the engine's efficiency. And, well, that's it, actually. Rinse and repeat this cycle for sweet, sweet power. Works good on paper, so let's try to bring the engine to reality. All of the 3D printed parts were printed from Gembert PLA and Prusament PLA using a layer height of 0.1mm and a 0.4mm nozzle. And of course, the design printed perfectly the first time. Eventually, though, I had everything printed and ready for assembly. Except that, even before I could start assembling the engine, I noticed yet another critical mistake in my design. The nuts holding everything together clash with the pressure block. So, reprint again, right? Of course not! We are simply going to file away the offending part of the pressure block, hey <laughs> hey! Apart from the 3D printed parts, the engine needs various rods, which were cut from this wire mesh bucket I had laying around, two springs, which I got from an old motherboard Northbridge heatsink assembly, two BBs, quite a number of O-rings of different sizes, a ball bearing, ideally some gasket material, and finally a couple M4 screws and nuts for tightening everything down. Originally I wanted to use M2 screws for securing all the engine block pieces together instead of M4 screws, however, this bad boy decided to get stuck in a canal, with my extremely valuable shipment of various screws and nuts probably on board. I digress. Assembling the engine is actually kind of a pain, as many of the parts are rather tight fits and a rather specific assembly routine needs to be followed. Perhaps one day I will get to improving on the assembly side of things. In any case, after the engine is assembled, it's time to oil up. <laughs> boy. I use WD-40 silicone lubricant and I may have been a little bit overzealous with the lube as the o-rings became quite moist and started spitting out the juicy power giving air. <laughs> and then the moment of truth. I hooked the engine up to a 2 liter soda bottle that I pressurized to around 30 psi and... So, knowing that the design works, I went ahead and did a couple more optimizations and printed a couple new parts, swapped them out, and... <laughs> I tried again and again, tweaking some parts around, but... So, defeated, I rolled back some of the upgrades and... <laughs> I guess this is a fine example of, if it ain't broke, then don't fix it. Quite frankly, I have no clue why the engine works with this pressure block, but not with this one. 
In any case, now that I have a working engine, I figured I should try to find out how much power it outputs, in order to know if there is any hope in trying to use it to power something fun, like a small RC car. So I attempted to make my own dynanometer, dynanometer, dynamometer, or a power meter, as it is called and demonstrated by Integza in this video. Link is in the description. The dynamo employs a simple prony brake to measure the torque through friction and a photo interrupter to measure the RPM of the engine. I had the necessary I can't believe it's not Arduino module, a load cell and a DX711 load cell amplifier module on hand. But due to the photo interrupter was nowhere to be seen. I did have this IR lead based distance sensor available, however I found that it wasn't quite up to the task. So, I decided to use 49E linear hall effect sensors and two neodymium magnets that I got from disassembling old CD readers a while ago in order to make the setup for measuring RPM. I may end up improving the code for the Dynamo in the future, but for now, the schematic and code for the Dynamo are up on GitHub. Link is in the description. I also added some radius and weight to the flywheel to make the engine operate a bit smoother, after which it was time to make some runs to measure the engine's performance. Having done a previous test run on a buggy version of the Dynamo, I expected the power output at 40 psi to be around 0.6 watts. But after I made the first run, I noticed that the power output started off at around 0.4 watts instead. And after the second run, the engine broke altogether! Looking at the data from the two successful Dynamo runs I did get, it is quite apparent that the performance of the engine drops considerably between the runs. Add on top of the measurement of 0.6 watts earlier and I think the engine failure was always imminent. I disassembled the engine but found no obvious signs of failure. I did find these cracks in one of the crankshaft housings and wear on valve pole cranks. That said, I'm highly skeptical that this is why the engine is stalling early. But just to be sure, I did switch out the bell cranks for new ones and try again. Alas, it was not to be. So, I decided that fixing the engine was no longer worthwhile and wrapped up the project. I did enjoy working on this project a lot though, and will most likely return to air pressure based engines in the future to improve on this design or figure out something different. If you wish to explore the project on your own, then in addition to the schematic and code for the Dynamo, I have also added the Blender file for engine parts and working animation in the Git repo. GitHub link down below, as usual. If you watched the video to this point, then thank you! And if it is not too much to ask, then do consider commenting, sharing, subscribing, liking, all that good stuff. Until the next project, bye! The juicy power giving air. Ah oh, no, voice crack.